Lay out the materials for one of the four walls on the floor and assemble it as the drawing in the manual depicts. First, you must mark where the studs will be located on each plate. Take the top and bottom plates and lay them side by side. Since the markings must be identical, it will save time and reduce the chance of errors if you mark them together. The location of each stud is detailed in the manual. Measure your studs to confirm that they are the correct length. Also, measure other items, such as the window cross pieces. If a piece of wood is not the correct length, then you have most likely chosen a piece that belongs somewhere else. No cutting is necessary at this point. When you have identified and laid out the correct pieces for the walls, as well as marked the top and bottom plates, you can begin nailing them together using the three inch nails. Use two nails at each stud to secure it to the plate. When you have nailed the studs in place, you can now affix the window spacers and door header in place. This usually applies only to front walls and some side walls. For walls longer than 8 feet, you will have to assemble the wall in two sections and fasten them together. Each piece of siding should overlap the one below to keep water out. Lay out all the siding to ensure that you have the correct pieces in the correct place. Your siding has been pre-cut. Check your procedure manual for the correct overhangs of the siding. The siding overhangs the bottom plate by three quarters of an inch. The bottom piece of siding can be nailed on first and can easily be identified because it is narrower than the rest. Before you attach the second piece, you must square the wall. It is the siding which will hold the wall square. Line up the bottom plate and one edge of the stud wall with the edges of the floor to make the wall square. Hammer two nails through the siding at each stud. As you progress up the wall with the siding, measure the distance to the top plate on each side of a door or window to check that your rows of siding are level. There is no specific top piece to the siding. You will have to nail the very top piece on, allow it to overhang the top plate, and cut it off flush with the top plate. Use one of the soffit boards as a straight edge to mark the overhang at the top of the walls. You can use a sharp hand saw or circular saw to cut this piece off. Before this wall is finished, you must go back and cut out part of the window, which was covered over by the first full length of siding above the window. Using a handsaw, cut the sides of the overhang up to the window frame, a vertical cut. The horizontal cut at the top of the window opening can be made by either snapping the boards off or making a knife cut to provide a breaking point for the overhang. Alternatively, all these cuts can be made using a circular saw. Please note that the door has no siding above it. The header above the door is covered by the door trim. As you finish siding each wall, just place them off to the side on your grass. Framing the end walls is identical to the process you used on the front and back wall. A gable roof end wall requires that you attach one of the trusses to the top of each end wall before nailing the top rows of siding. Remember to square the framed wall before attaching the siding. A neat way to keep it square while you're attaching the siding and gable end is to tack the frame to the floor while you're working on it. Recall that the floor should be perfectly square. When you have put half the siding on the end wall, attach the gable truss. Lay the truss along the top of the wall and adjust it so there is six and one-eighth inch overhang on each side. Make sure that the nailing plates on the truss joints are facing down and the truss is flush with the top plate. Nail the truss to the top plate. Cut the top row of siding so that it will be flush with the top plate and nail it on. The random length siding that goes on the gable end is perpendicular to the siding on the wall. Once you have laid out all the pieces, you can nail them in place. Allow the end of the pieces to overhang the edge of the truss. 
mark the overhang, and cut it off.